Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Making your way, fearful and alone, through the dark Caribbean night. While ahead of you, arms held out to you, stands the most beautiful girl you've ever seen. And the most evil. Listen now as Escape brings you Herb Purdom's terrifying story, The Running Man. <laughs> hot in Taylor that night when it began. The little Honduran banana port simmered and stewed in a sticky heat that made your bones soft and your skin wet. Even Chato's Casino wasn't much relief. The usual handful of chapines and caribs crowded around Chato's warped and tired roulette table, while above, the big ceiling fan slowly churned up the warm, smoky air. All right, little boy. Thank you, that's number four. Numero cuatro, senores. Rojo. You win again, Captain Markham. You got it, Markham, all of us. My lucky night, lad. Yours will come. Not me. I don't have lucky nights. That's too much. Es verdad, senor Owen. Lo siento mucho. Yeah. I'm sorry, too. I was hoping you would not be coming to see me tonight, Owen. Mm, it's a monotonous world, Shadow. Every night you sit there on your stool playing that mandolin and watching me lose money. Every night I lose it and come to you to borrow it back. <laughs> it's a pretty dull circle. For you? Que lastima. I don't want pity, just money. 500 lempiras. Ah, yes. Well, come on, let's have it. You're in a hurry, Owen. Always in a hurry. I like to get places fast. I know, but I think maybe you're running so fast you miss what you are passing. Thanks for the philosophy, but I need the money more. What's the matter? My credit no good? You owe me 4000 already, Owen. So? My plantation's worth ten times that. Plantations? I don't want. Just money. Okay, okay, forget it. I'll just have to sell some more bananas. Good night, Shadow. Buenas noches, amigo. Good evening, Owen. Hello, Mr. Loomis. You mind if I sit down? Hey, you lose again tonight, Owen? Chatter water oil is swing. <laughs> We've been asking him to do that for 15 years. Yeah. I'm always the same answer. Manana. Tomorrow he'll do it. <laughs> He's a car of... He's happy. And the swing still squeaks. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, Owen. Your socks are nearly half finished. They'll be ready by Christmas. Christmas? That's slow work. You spend months knitting me a pair of socks you could buy for five bucks. Well, I like to knit. Gives me time to meditate. Is that the same reason you stay in this hole? You've been a big man for the American Fruit Company 20 years. You must have enough to get out of Honduras. Yes, Owen, I have enough money to retire. More than enough, I guess. But it's not just a job. Taylor's my home, as it will become yours. Oh, no. Somehow I'm going to make enough money to pull out of here. <laughs> You'll change your mind. You're young and impatient with life. At least I get things done. That's true. In three years, you've built up a fine plantation. You work hard, Owen. But you also throw a great deal away on Chateau's wheel trying to get rich in a hurry. Well, if you don't mind, sir, no lectures tonight. When can I start shipping? Well, uh, what's your deadline? I've got an order for 3,000 stems of Baltimore cut due there in 60 days. Yeah. Company boat will be here in three weeks. I'll make space for your load. Thanks. Uh, Owen. Hmm? You uh, went broke inside? Yeah. Borrow? Yeah. 
You need some money to pay your field hands. Tell him to see my paymaster and he'll advance it. But Mr. Loomis, I, I don't know what to say. It just seems you're always helping me. Well, well, it's my pleasure, Owen. Perhaps someday you'll take over my place with the company. That would make an old man very happy. It would make a young man happy, too. Good night, sir. Uh, one thing more. Yes? A word of advice, Owen, about Selena. Stay away from her. Why? Because of all the talk about her? She's a bad one, Owen. A devil. Even her own people are afraid of her. <laughs> but I'm not a carob. And speaking of the devil, I've got a date with her down at the beach. <laughs> Look, sir. You don't believe in voodoo, do you? Not exactly, but I respect it. But I don't, sir. And Selena's the prettiest girl around here. Yeah, she's beautiful, yes. But sooner or later, you'll find out we really are speaking of the devil. When I got to the beach, it seemed empty except for a few sleeping gulls. And I saw her coming towards me in the brilliant moonlight. Selena walked like a cat on parade, her body swaying in unconscious rhythm, her long black hair flowing loose and glistening over her bare shoulders. Swimming or talking or just lying quietly beside me on the warm white sand, Selena was a wonderful antidote for loneliness. Boy, you are happy with me, yes? Sure, Selena. Sure I am. Then why you look at me so funny tonight? I didn't realize I had. But Senor Loomis, he tell you bad things about me, no? Forget it. You know I am not wicked like they say. Sure, I know. But others don't. I'm tired of defending you. You've just got to stop playing around with voodoo, Selena, that's all. I understand. I will let nothing come between us, Owen. Nothing. Selena. Owen. Now you not pay attention to what stupid people say about me. Will you? No, Selena. Of course not. Anybody home? Here on the porch. <laughs> Glad you came. I've got a surprise for you. Surprise? How'd the loading go? Same as always. Ship's pulling out now. What's this surprise? My socks finished ahead of time? Oh, no. This is far more important than my knitting. Come inside. Well, you're certainly being mysterious about it. What is it that's... Oh. <laughs> you must be Owen. I'm Betty Stannard. Betty's the daughter of a friend of mine, Owen. Yeah, and as a tourista, she'll need showing around the island. Oh, but Betty hardly I... needs some showing around, Owen. Well, she... of course she does, and I'm the one to do it. But you don't oh, understand. She is... All right, but... we'll let her decide. How about it, Miss Stannard? Oh, well, you're rather impetuous, aren't you? You should see him when he's gambling. Well, Miss Stannard, what's the verdict? Can I be your guide? Well, since you insist that I need one, I'll be delighted. <laughs> Now traveled on Taylor's one railroad. Fifty-six miles of it belongs to the American Fruit Company, but those last four miles are all ours. Oh, and so impressive. Even from the maintenance car. <laughs> There's our house. Uh, your house? I'm only a tourista, remember? But if you stay, you'll be a chapine. Oh, I think I'd rather be a tourista. What? Give up a chance at this wonderful life of tropical skies and red bananas. And chiggers and scorpions and zopos and mosquitoes huh? and sopalotes and paludismo. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. <laughs> Something wrong? Plenty's wrong. I spent three days showing you the sights of Taylor and the banana plantations, but I never said anything about black buzzards or malaria. Where'd you learn all that? Here. I was raised in Taylor. <laughs> well... Are you going to show me your house and the rest of your plantation? So you can make more fun of me? Oh, 
course, you were the one who insisted I needed a guide. You and Lomas must have had quite a laugh. Well, I, I admit it started out as a joke. But... Yes? Well, I, I've spent every day with you since I came here. That's a lot of time to waste on a joke. Perhaps you mean it's a lot of time to waste on me. It wasn't wasted, Owen. Betty, I owe you an apology. Owen... With me, it started as a kind of a game, too, but now it, it's changed. In three days, it changed. Changed for me, too. Then... Then you... Yes, Owen. Oh, Betty. Betty. Wait, wait, wait. Before you say anything, Owen, there's one thing we must settle. You're gambling. Oh? What about it? You must quit, Owen, completely. You're serious? I've never been more so. Will you do it for me? Well, with my bad luck, I guess it won't be too hard to quit. Promise me, Owen. All right, you have my word on it. Good. And now go on about the tropical skies and red bananas. Zone popos and all. Zone popos and all. Oh, no. What was that? I, I don't know. It came from those trees there. Near my house. It sounded vicious somehow. Probably just a wild cat. I, I think I'd better take you home, Betty. Oh, and that wasn't a wild cat. Let's not talk about it. There's nothing to worry about, Betty. Nothing. <laughs> It was dark when I got back to my house and found the carob servants gone. The reason was in the living room. In the flickering light of seven small candles lay what was left of three white chickens, ripped apart in a fury of feathers and bones. But it was the blood that made the scene one of utter horror. Dark, glistening blood. And crouching in the candlelight was Selena. When she lifted her head, I saw her eyes. They were dark fires of heat now. And she was no longer beautiful, but something incredibly evil. Selena, why are you here? Why did you do this? Por qué? Gods and devils love and hate, but no one knows why. Why? Why? Get out, Selena. Get out and take this voodoo junk with you. I will go. See, si. but you will come to me, Owen. You will come. Never. Uh, you will come, for you are cursed tonight. I have put the curse of fortune on you, Owen. The what? From now on, you will never be able to lose <laughs> my wedding gift, sweetheart. <laughs> We will return to Escape and tonight's story, The Running Man, in just a moment. Univac, the magic electronic computer that adds up figures faster than people can think, will be on the job election night along with CBS Radio's top newsmen. Don't miss the special election returns broadcast at 6.15 p.m. New York time. And make CBS Radio your election headquarters on election night starting at 8 p.m. New York time. And now, back to Escape. You will never be able to lose a bet. Believe it? No, of course I didn't believe it. A voodoo curse by a hysterical carob girl? Who would? But I found myself thinking about it, wondering what it would be like never to lose a bet. And I kept thinking about it, about all the wealth it could bring, the freedom, the chance to get out of Taylor. And finally, I decided to test it, 
At least then I could forget the whole ridiculous business. Oh, my, my, my. This last batch of yarn is certainly inferior. It's time today it's broken. <laughs> Mr. Loomis, do you have a deck of cards here? Mm, yes, I, own. I think I do. Where? Where are they? Well, let's see. Oh, yes, uh, in that drawer there. Uh, I don't see... Oh, yes, here they are. Oh, good. You going to play some rummy with Betty? <laughs> I always like that game. Would you cut cards with me, sir? What's that? Oh, now, Owen, you know that I don't gamble. For a penny. That's all, just a penny. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> very well. There. Queen of clubs. Now, my turn. King. I win. Try again. Nine. Jack. Again. Keep cutting. Six of hearts. Eight of hearts. Again, again. Oh, oh, and isn't this a little bit silly? No, no, to... please. <laughs> All right. King. Yeah, try and beat that. Ace. Well, you are in luck today. I can't lose. Do you understand? I can't lose. The curse is working. Curse? Oh, darling, that sounds like voodoo. Voodoo? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I just don't know, but I just won four times in a row. Oh, and what are you talking about? Is something the matter? I don't know. But I'm going to find out right now. Oh, and... Chato? Chato, I've got to play the wheel. Too early, amigo. Later. Now, Chato, now. So much impatience, my friend. The croupier is not here. No one is here but me. Well, then you run the wheel. Me? But I am the owner. It's not proper that I run my Proper? Wheel. Who cares if it's proper? I do. Come back later and you can you play. You don't hear well. I want to play that wheel now, Primitivo. Oh. Primitivo? You're giving me much insult, senor. An apology would save me the trouble of having to kill you. I'm sorry, Chato. That was a stupid thing for me to do. Here. I hope I didn't break it. Well, it is all right. I, I lost my head. You lost a friend. I said I was sorry. See. I, I'll come back later. My casino is open to the public, senor. Look, Chato, I, I didn't mean that crack about Primitivo. Adios, senor. But I... <laughs> Adios, Chato. Owen. Better. I followed you here, Owen. What? Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, I don't understand, Betty. A promise you made to me. Oh, well, of course, but but this won't be gambling, Betty. No, then what will it be? You don't understand. I've got a curse on me. I've got to find out if it works. And if it does? Then I'll be rich. I can't lose. You can lose me, Owen. And if you break your promise about gambling, you will. Betty, wait. Betty, please try and understand what... Oh, for the Lord. Oh, and you're a fool. Captain Markham... You're taking a big risk with that girl. She means what she says. Uh, she'll get over it. She's just worried that I'll gamble away the plantation or something. She doesn't understand about... About the voodoo curse of Selena? How did you know about that? If I told you all I know about Selena, it would turn your stomach inside out. She's pure evil, lad. I learned that ten years ago. Her curse will destroy you. The curse of winning? <laughs> That's a nice way to be destroyed. There's no nice way to lose your soul. Just what is it you know about Selena? Nothing you'd believe now. But I know she wants you and she may get you. And if that happens, may God have mercy on you, because she won't. Well, I was warned, but it didn't matter then. All I could think about was the way I'd won cutting cards with Mr. Loomis. The curse seemed to be working. Maybe I was a man who couldn't lose. And that night in Chattel's casino, I found out. Numero siete, senores. Oh, you win again, senor Owen. 
10 times, 20 times. I won. In half an hour, I had won nearly 4,000 lempiras. Numero 56. You cannot lose tonight, Senor Oye. Oh, uh, not just tonight, Tomas. I can't lose, period. And to prove it, I'm going to break the bank right now. The whole works. Another one. You're pressing your fortune, senor. At 35 to 1, I'm pressing your fortune, Chato. When that ball drops, I'll own this place. <laughs> I've got the latest curse on me, Chato. I can't lose. Eh? Alto. Hey, what's the idea of stopping the wheel? The game is close, senor. But, well, you can't do that. I've done it, senor. Hmm. Afraid it's Elena's curse? You call me primitivo? That gives me the right to have a savage superstition. Shadow, please. Please give me a chance. This is the only place in Taylor to gamble. And I have Senor, to... you are unwelcome here. My game is close to you permanently. Leave the chips on the table and your debt to me is cancelled. But all right. All right, I'll get out of here. I'll get out of Taylor. There are plenty of places in the world where I can play, and not for them peers either. So, Owen is gambling at the casino. And winning. Selena has him bewitched right enough. Isn't there a way we can stop this? Well, that's it depends on Owen. If he has the will to stop gambling, yes. But if he doesn't... Owen! Mr. Loomis... Will you buy my plantation? Why? Oh, oh, and you don't mean that. You can have it at a bargain. It's worth $20,000. i will sell it to you for ten. No. Oh, and you work for three years. Betty, I can run that 10000 into millions. Don't you understand? But not here. I've got to go where the money is. Monte Carlo, Dovin. No, I will not let you do this. You won't. Well, you're taking a lot on yourself, Mr. Loomis. Haven't I always, Owen? You're like my own son. You know that. I can't let you throw away your life on this crazy... I'm tired of having everyone tell me what to do. All I want to know is what you'll give me for my plantation. Name your price. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Betty, talk to him. This is our chance to be rich. I can make enough for all of us, but I need a stake. You have enough money now, Owen. If you don't throw it away... Throw it away? I'm going to turn it into a fortune. You call that throwing it away? You don't get anything for nothing, Owen. But I tell you, I can't lose. The curse works. I've tried it. Even if it works and you can't lose, it's still a curse, lad. There's no happy... Shut up! It. Shut up! I won't listen to any more of this sanctimonious drivel. Mr. Loomis, give me 5000 No, not five cents, Owen. But you've got to. There's no one else. All right, now, listen to me. I'll give you 20000 for your plantation. Well, well, that's more like it. On the condition that you stay here in Taylor for six months to think it over. Six months? Yes. And if you still want to leave, well, I... you're out of your mind. I'm leaving on the next boat, and you can't stop me. I can. I'm a big man in Taylor, remember? Before you get your clearances from all the ministries and the national police, I can have you wrapped up in so much red tape, you'll never get away. It won't work. It will work. And for your sake, I'm going to make arrangements tonight. Now. No. No, you can't do this to me. I'm doing it for you, Owen. Well, that's the difference. No, I won't let you do it. Now, let me pass. I, I said, said no. Get back. Oh, I... Oh. Mr. Loomis. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Lash, what is it? Oh. What's the matter? Is he hurt? He's dead. Just a little push, that's all. But when Markham lifted the old man, I could see he'd fallen on the needles with which he was knitting. The needles were buried in his back, and now blood was dripping from them onto the socks he'd been knitting for me. You killed him. He was trying to help you, and you killed no. him. No, it was an accident. I, I didn't mean... Didn't you? I only pushed him. I think I'd better get the police. Markham, wait. I... Betty, you know I didn't mean to hurt him. You know that, Betty. Don't touch me. But please, listen. I, I love you. Get away from me. I don't want your love. Just leave me alone. Won't you even let me explain? Explain to the police, Tom. Police? No, Markham, I've got to stop him. Markham! Markham, stop! Markham, please. Please help me. They'll hang me. They sure will. But you know it was an accident. 
You. You can help me get away. Your boat. My boat to get away? I'd scuttle her first. Markham, I'll give you anything. Money. Get it through your head, Owen. You killed one of the finest men that ever drew a breath. But it wasn't my fault. It, it, it was a curse. Please, Markham. We're friends. You don't have any friends. Not now. Except maybe Selena. Selena. Yes, Selena. She could hide me in the jungle. Aye, for the rest of your life. All right, Owen, go to her. She'll take you. I'll let you go. It'll be a worse punishment than a hanging. I was lost. One moment I was a man with friends, a sweetheart, a future. A man who couldn't lose. But now I was alone in a world of hate, with nothing to hope for, not even my life, unless, yes, I turned and I saw her, Selena. She was standing at the edge of the jungle, smiling, evil. She was waiting for me. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you The Running Man by Herb Purdom, starring Vic Perrin. Featured in the cast were Michael Ann Barrett and Gene Bates, with Ralph Moody, Don Diamond, Barney Phillips, and Byron Kane. Editorial supervision is by John Meston. And the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are standing at the entrance of a walled Arab town. While behind you, coming slowly through the night, are the shuffling footsteps of a blind beggar who will lead you into a harrowing world of darkness and terror. So listen next week when Escape brings you Kathleen Height's strange tale of adventure in North Africa, The Return. Tomorrow night, hear Herbert Marshall as Frankenstein on CBS Radio Suspense and Viva Zapata on Lux Radio Theater. Remember, Suspense and Lux Radio Theater tomorrow evening on most of these same CBS radio stations. Stay tuned now for Robert Trout with the news, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Roy Rowan speaking. This is Peggy Lee. Your vote counts. Hear the election results on the CBS radio network. <laughs> 